speaking to online meditation with myself and beautiful Echo. Oh. We don't want that happening, do we? Okay, so I'm hoping that we can still see the screen. Healing with Lotus Born Buddha's Mantra. You want to explain what Lotus Born Buddha is? Does it have more information there? <laughs> Only with a broad <laughs> mind can we objectively view. So going back to the previous one. Now, um, uh, do you want to or not really? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, to be to be honest, you know, both of us are feeling rather phased because of the um, the, the family tragedy that's um, unfolding now. So um, we're kind of a little bit absent-minded and, and um, uh, Sukhiyamuni Buddha is referring to Sukhiyamuni Buddha where when he was born, he walked upon the lotus leaves. No, they are not the same one. No, it's <laughs> it, It's okay, we can pass it. Okay, we can pass it, okay. Yeah. Bad question. Only with a broad mind can we objectively view our thoughts and emotions. By Ven Renz. We often wonder what to do about negativity or certain troubling emotions. In the spaciousness of meditation, you can view your thoughts and emotions with a totally unbiased attitude. This requires a broad mind and great wisdom. At this point, your attitude changes. Sometimes, afflictions and emotions may be stronger, but your mind and wisdom are greater, allowing you to embrace them. So it depends on yourself. If your mind is really like an ocean, then you have nothing to fear, even in great storms. But if you are just a small boat, then you will be afraid. When storms come, you will be terrified. How big is your mind? Is it like a boat or like the ocean? This needs wisdom. When your wisdom arises, your attitude will be different. When your attitude changes, then the whole atmosphere of your mind changes. Your attitude is determined by your understanding and view. When you have the right view, you naturally have the right attitude. With this right attitude, the whole atmosphere of your mind changes. Even the very nature of your thoughts and emotions changes. When you become more agreeable, then they do. Don't worry or fear your thoughts and emotions. Like an old wise man watching a child play. This attitude is different. If you have no difficulty with them, they will have no difficulty with you either. So whatever thoughts and emotions arise, allow them to arise and settle like the waves in the ocean. Whatever you find yourself thinking, let that thought rise and settle. Of course, beginners can use this method to deal with subtle thoughts and emotions. However, this doesn't work for strong greed and anger, which are like tsunami. If you don't quickly escape or find a way to deal with it, the waves will swallow you or even kill you. These strong afflictions are not small waves that come and go. When a small wave comes, you may stand by the shore, let it wet your feet and find it enjoyable. If you are just a boat, and boats come in different sizes, and you have set sail and find yourself in the ocean, then you need to pay attention to both the size of the waves and the size of the boat. Too big wave and too small boat are both risky. At this point, simply being patient doesn't work. Why? Because your mind is not yet like the ocean, 
you are just about. As beginners, we need to stay away from challenging circumstances and protect ourselves with precepts. Then during meditation, we need to be mindful and meditate on no self in person and no self in phenomena to deal with afflictive obscurations and cognitive obscurations. These are the methods we currently use. Let your thoughts rise and settle. Don't constrain it, grasp at it, feed it or indulge it. Be patient. Don't cling to it and don't try to solidify it. Neither follow thoughts nor invite them. Be like the ocean looking at its own waves, letting them come and go. Don't think about thoughts and don't have any emotion or attachment to them. Instead, allow them to flow through the mind while keeping your mind free of afterthoughts. Mm, that's quite... Um, good point. Quite profound. <laughs> oh yes, and a good point. Yeah. It is profound. It's not letting your thoughts control you. Instead, you are controlling your thoughts. And when the tsunami... Well, there's no controlling. It's just a looking at it, right? Okay. Like a looking at our sadness. Then if it's strong, then maybe we're not able to... Dissociate. At the moment. But if it's not strong, then it will... Just, when we look at it, it will cease. Mm. Mm. Okay, broadening the mind for inner peace. Now, in meditation, a spacious and open mind allows us to observe these feelings objectively without judgment. So you don't think whether something is good or something is bad or neutral. You're just watching. With a mindset as vast as the ocean, we become resilient even in life's emotional storms. Embracing each wave calmly. Again, during the storms, just watching, just watching. And by learning to expand our perspective, we gain the wisdom to see thoughts and emotions as temporary clouds passing through the sky, helping us maintain peace and stability. So you can see the storm come, the storm go. But in a way, you're not in the storm mm. anymore. Mm. Observe. Observe. Mm. And now, as I said before, we're going through our personal storm. And um, yes, it'll be a challenge, but it's growth. And that's, that is how things are. It's the nature of the universe. People do go. Okay, I believe the next slide is the start of the meditation. Oh, that's uh, the Lotus Born uh, Buddha's suit mantra. And uh, so it's one sentence. Ong a hong, benza guru bema city hong. So this uh, whole 20 minutes of uh, meditation, it has this song as a background music. We can make it a little bit. Uh, lower, not too loud, and not to interfere with uh, people's. Okay, well, uh, if it is loud, I'll turn the volume down. Okay. What is the meaning of that sentence? Oh, uh, that's uh, the literal sound the translation of Sanskrit. Yes. Yeah. And what is the Sanskrit meaning? Oh. Sanskrit is the language that was used when the most recent Buddha was here with us. So. They say that on are uh, home are the three uh, original sound of the universe, right? Okay. On are uh, home, and uh, this um, uh, I'll I'll find out. Shall I do some packing while we're looking? 
<laughs> no, 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 <laughs> not really. Um, wait, because I. So, so while we're waiting, just get yourself comfortable, and I um. No, I actually had we actually had that part. You mean in the next page? No, uh, I deleted it because uh, um, I was thinking that on our home these are not so easy to pronounce. Okay. But on our home, these syllables represent the body, speech, and mind of all Buddhas, linking us to their enlightened qualities. Mm, and the second sound, uh, Virdra, signifies indestructible strength, symboli symboli symbolizing the power to overcome all obstacles and negativity. Guru means unsurpassable teacher, embodying the lotus-born Buddha's profound wisdom and compassion, revered across time. Bema meaning lotus. It connects uh, the lotus, lotus-born Buddha to Amita Buddha's uh, lineage, symbolizing purity and the spiritual accomplishment. Siddhi represents true accomplishment, guiding practitioners to fulfillment and success. Hong, the essence of the Buddha mind, carrying lotus bomb Buddha's blessings and wisdom. I'll send this out. <laughs> it's a shame you deleted that. Yeah, point. I deleted it. Yeah. Because of the, you know, I, I thought it was not so easy yeah, to pronounce. But, yeah. Okay, so... Everyone get um, seated comfortably, preferably cross-legged. Um, it's not compulsory. Um, try and have your back straight with your hands in either that position or that position or even just rest it on your lap. Close your eyes and relax and empty your mind. Okay, so there was something extra. <laughs> okay, so the Lotus Born Buddha's blessing is said to dissolve negativity, promote safety, and purify our environment. As each syllable resonates, visualize inner obstacles gently dissolving, replaced by a growing sense of peace. That's a beautiful sentence, actually. Mm. Just, just dissolve all your problems away. And let the growing sense of peace replace it. In this tranquil space, we can find healing, strength, and a connection to the infinite compassion of the Vajra Guru. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Now keep your eyes closed. Gently rub your hand and put them over your eyes so your eyes can feel the warmth. And then pat your head. Pat your neck. And slowly open your eyes. The reason we um, need to pat our head is because when we do meditation, the chi will move up and then will be stored in, uh, in our head. And if we don't pat it, it may cause a headache. So if we pat it, it will help our head relax. You don't feel it, right? Because you are very, your your chakras are very open. <laughs> I always thought it was to make your hair grow. Oh, yeah. yeah. That helps a lot. Yeah. And uh, I, sorry for the coughing. I was coughing because uh, I felt that she was, up because my throat was hurt because of the singing. And uh, so when the chi goes through yeah. here, it hurts, uh, it uh, itches. Okay. Yeah, my throat. But I feel, uh, I could feel it was recovering. It's really good. Good. Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, I, I cancelled the share screen. So Really? Yeah. You know, because we started talking. So what I'll do, I'll share again. Okay. And it looks different. Anyway, so I'll share that. Okay. Is that? Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. And ending blessing. Key factors that determine an individual's spiritual energy level are their social so, social motives and state of mind. Let's create a world filled with peace and happiness together. May all, May all beings always, always possess, possess happiness, happiness and the causes, causes of happiness. happiness. May, May all beings always, always be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. suffering. May all beings always have the joy of no suffering, suffering and feel contentment in their hearts. May all beings be free from greed and fear and abide in equilibrium and all The song, the music in the background is called um, Four Immeasurables and the four sentences are the lyrics. And But it's in Chinese, the music is in Chinese. We will have a version in English. Monthly meditation sessions. We have a virtual meditation activity. We are in round five. It ends at the end of this month. At nine o'clock at night. UTC. And we have the online meditation with myself and Beautiful Echo. And there's one coming up in December. The date has not been determined yet. It's TBD. <laughs> to be decided. <laughs> to be determined. Okay, to well, be determined. Okay. Uh, additional resources. And we have some... Uh, we have a meditation Facebook group. If you are interested, you can join in our Facebook group. And we will share some uh, um, guided uh, meditation music. Okay. Yeah. We have a website, Embarking on the Path to Inner Peace website. That's at uh, lightandwisdom.com. And we have a our Spooky Tree Virtual Meditation Challenge, and that's the web link beneath there. Because you're watching this on video, <laughs> clicking doesn't work. I've tried. <laughs> and the next one, the me next meditation will be our episode 14. If anyone likes, you know, we have just uh, had uh, two musics. Uh, one is uh, the uh, Lotus Bond Buddha's uh, mantra, and the other one is uh, for immeasurables. Actually, we have a lot of other musics. And uh, the singer, uh, her name is Susu. Uh, we have some more musics uh, of hers in our YouTube channel. If anyone's interested, you can go to YouTube and search for Spooky to Rife and go to our YouTube channel. There is a playlist called the um, mantra list. Yeah. I'm not quite sure, but you can easily find it. There are a lot uh, more music there. And there is a list of uh, Medicine Buddha's uh, uh, mantra. I was just looking at the, um, the chats. I was listening to it, but there's another person... Um, as well as Crystal, there's Nikki. So they're going to from be waiting. New Zealand. Yeah, they're going to be waiting for us at the airport. <laughs> give, us, give us breakfast. <laughs> yeah, Kiwi hospitality. But no, um, thank you for joining us on this meditation session. Mm. Um, it's it is better to meditate with a group of people, and now we are a group of people all, th all throughout the world. Yeah. Um, it is good. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you for joining us. And we wish you all the best. And um, just think about what, just ponder on what we talked about today with regards to these tsunamis, these problems that come charging at you. Be the ocean. 
and just observe, just stand back and observe. You don't need to participate. And you can turn the tension into peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the time we have very strong emotions. We have afflictions. Uh, you know, we feel sad, we feel happy because we put ourselves in this movie. But if we take ourselves outside and observe it, it's like uh, watching a movie. A yeah. sad movie. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, it's not too far from the truth because when you do observe, you think, gosh, you know, the only reason why I got angry is because I've got self-pride or I consider myself more important than the person who's got conflicting opinions to myself. But if you are truly a spectator, then you don't have such thoughts. You're just watching and keeping mm. neutral. Mm. It's not so easy to... No, it's not easy. Yeah, but... We can find some time to do that every day, yeah. maybe five minutes each time. It's stretched it out each time so yeah. that, but even not as in, a, you mean do a meditation or? No, you can't, like uh, when we are work, uh, working, just to stop and uh, take five minutes out and uh, okay. just observe, okay. observe the sound, the, you know, everything around us. Yeah. And, uh, but do it um, several times a day. It mm. doesn't have to be long each time. Mm then gradually we will. The thing that we're trying to overcome is karmic habits, things that are so deeply ingrained in your character that that is the way you react. Mm. If, if someone says something that always makes you angry, for example, you're no better than a robot. Mm. You haven't got free will mm -hmm. because you're tied to your own karmic obstacles. Mm. So just step back, yeah. look at yourself and look at everything and just don't pass judgment. It's nothing to do with blame. Mm. Just observe. Mm. And that's the path to wisdom, mm. the path to light. Mm. And everything happening in our life is actually an opportunity for us to, um, to learn what in us, what within us is making us um, reacting like that. Yeah, yes. Mm. And to be well off, have a lot of money and, and not, no need for anything is a curse. It means that you won't try to advance yourself. You are happy with what you have. So you won't get better. What you have is what you have at the end. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's actually benefit and hardship, benefit and having no money, going hungry, even in getting ill mm. and experiencing, you know, major catastrophes in your life. Each one of those is this opportunity that Echo is talking about, mm. where they become an, an opp opportunity. You're not comfortable feeling this way. You look for the solution, and the solution is stand back, don't participate, mm. observe, mm. just observe. Mm. Alrighty, that concludes today's meditation session. Thank you for being here today. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> well, I actually, you know, I was not so confident, but uh, I have uh, uh, recorded uh, several songs this year and uh, it really helped me become more confident. I will right. share the music. Really? With... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, I found that... Um, I don't need to, you know, pursue anything outside because everything is already there within me. Yeah. 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 Thank you, everybody. Take Thank care. You. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Keep on passing the love forwards. Bye-bye.